In the following example, IQ Computers manufactures and sells general purpose microcomputers. As part of the study to evaluate sales personnel, management wants to determine at a 5% significance level if annual sales volume, number of units sold by salespeople, follows a normal probability distribution. A simple random sample of 33 salespeople was taken and then their numbers of units sold are below. The first salesperson sold 33 computers, the second sold 43, the third sold 44, and so on. The sample size is 33. The sample mean is equal to 71.67 computers sold. The sample center deviation is equal to 18.47 computers sold. The null hypothesis is the population of number of units sold has a normal distribution. The alternative hypothesis is the population of number of units sold does not have a normal distribution. The chi-square stat has a chi-square distribution if the expected frequencies are all five or more. To ensure this, we divide the normal distribution into k intervals, all having the same expected frequency. If the expected frequency of each interval is 5, we divide the sample size 33 by 5, which equals 6.6. .6. Since you cannot have 6.6 .6 intervals, we round this down to the nearest even number, which happens to be 6. Hence, we will split the normal distribution into 6 intervals, all having the same expected frequency. The expected frequency of each of the six intervals is equal to the sample size, 33, divided by the number of intervals, 6. Thus, the expected frequency of each of the six intervals is equal to 5.5, which, if you notice, is greater than 5. To define the, the intervals, first draw the normal distribution, then split it into six intervals like I have done here. The probability of being in each interval is equal to the area under the distribution, 1, divided by the number of intervals, 6. Thus, the probability of being in the first interval is equal to 0.1667. The probability of being in the second interval is equal to 0.1667. The probability of being in the third interval is equal to 1.667. The probability of being in the fourth interval is equal to 0.1667. The probability of being in the fifth interval is 0.1667. The probability of being in the last interval is 0.1667. Find the z-stat that corresponds to the red tail probability, the first interval. which equals the product of the number of intervals in the red tail, 1, times the probability of each interval, 0.1667. This equals 0.1667. The z value that corresponds to this value is in row negative 0.9 and column 0.07 in the standard normal table. Hence, the z value is negative 0.97 for the first interval. Next, find the z-value that corresponds to this larger red tail probability, which equals 2, because there's two intervals here, times the probability of each interval, 0.1667, or 0.3333. The z-value that corresponds to this value is in row 0.4 and column 0.03 in the standard normal table. Hence, the z-value is negative 0.43. Find the z that corresponds to this very large red tail probability, which equals 3, because there are three intervals here, times the probability of each interval 0.1667. 
this product is 0.5. The z value that corresponds to this value is in row negative 0 0.0 and column 0 0.0 in the standard normal table. Hence, the z value is 0. Next, find the remaining z values. We already found the previous two, negative 0.97 and negative 0.43. By symmetry, we have the other two, 0.43 and 0.97. Now we convert the z values to x values. The z values are normally distributed with a mean equal to 0 and a standard deviation equal to 1. If the null hypothesis is correct, the x values are normally distributed. Unlike the z values, the population mean and population standard deviation for x are unknown. However, we've computed the point estimates of the population mean and the population standard deviation. They are equal to x bar, which is 71.67, and s, which is equal to 18.47. To standardize random variable x, we subtract from the x values its mean and divide this difference by the standard deviation of the sample. Now if we solve this equation for x, this unstandardizes the z values. Multiplying both sides of the equation by the standard deviation and canceling yields z times the sample standard deviation equal to x minus the sample mean. Adding the sample mean to both sides of this yields x equal to the sample mean plus z times the sample standard deviation. Substituting the sample mean 71.76, sample standard deviation 18.47, and the first z value negative 0.97 into this equation yields an x value equal to 53.84. Replacing the z value with negative 0.43 yields an x value of 63.81. Replacing the z value with 0 yields an x value equal to 71.76. Replacing the z value with 0.43 yields an x value of 79.7. Replacing the z value with 0.97 yields an x value equal to 89.68. The x values define the intervals of this test. Recall that the expected frequency for each interval is 5.5. Some of these values up is equal to the sample size of 33, which is what we expected. The data from the sample of 33 salespersons is given below. We use this table to compute the observed frequencies for each of the intervals. The first interval, negative infinity to 53.84, contains six values. The second interval, 53.84 to 63.81, contains four values. Hence, the observed frequency of interval 53.84 to 63.81 is four. The third interval, 63.81 to 71.76, contains six values. Hence, the observed frequency of interval 63.81 to 71.76 is 6. The fourth interval, 71.76 to 79.7, contains 6 values. Hence, the observed frequency of interval 71.76 to 79.7 is 6. The fifth interval, 71.7 to 89.68, contains 4 values. Hence, the observed frequency of interval 79.7 to 89.68 is 4. The fifth interval, 89.68 to infinity, contains 7 values. Hence, the observed frequency of interval 89.68 to infinity is 7. 
sum of these values up is equal to the sample size of 33, which is what we expected. The first deviation from expected is equal to 6 minus 5.5, or 0.5. Squaring the first deviation from expected, 0.5, and then dividing by the expected frequency, 5.5, yields 0.05. The second deviation from expected is equal to 4 minus 5.5, or negative 1.5. Squaring the second deviation from expected, negative 1.5, and the dividing by expected frequency, 5.5, yields 0.41. The third deviation from expected is equal to 6 minus 5.5, or 0.5. Squaring the third deviation from expected, 0.5, and then dividing by the expected frequency, 5.5, yields 0.05. The fourth deviation from expected is equal to 6 minus 5.5, or 0.5. Scoring the fourth deviation from expected, 0.5, and then dividing by expected frequency 5.5 yields 0.05. The fifth deviation from expected is equal to 4 minus 5.5, or negative 1.5. Scoring the fifth deviation from expected, negative 1.5 and then dividing by expected frequency 5.5 yields 0.41. Scoring the sixth deviation from expected, 1.5, and then dividing by the expected frequency 5.5 yields 0.41. Some of the numbers in the final column of this table yields the chi-square statistic, which equals 1.36. The mean of the chi-square distribution is equal to the degrees of freedom. The number of intervals minus the number of parameters estimated, minus 1. Since we used 6 intervals and had to estimate 2 parameters, the population mean and the population standard deviation, the mean is equal to 3. The critical value for this test is in the chi-square distribution table. The critical value is in the row corresponding to 3 degrees of freedom and the column corresponding to a significance level of 0.05. Thus, the critical value is equal to 7.815. The probability of being greater than this number is 0.05, the significance level, or the area in red. The probability of being less than it is 0.95, which is the area in white that is under the distribution. The critical value defines the do not reject the null and reject the null regions. The chi-square stat, 1.36, is in the do not reject the null region because it is smaller than the critical value from the chi-square table, 7.815. Thus, at the 5% level of significance, there is no reason to doubt the assumption that the population is normally distributed. Complete homework 12 on Blackboard.